Rob Smith, you have been challenged. You will go to Australia. There you will be given five tasks. Should you fail one of these tasks, we will make you do something really horrid. The more you fail, the more unpleasant it will become. You have five days. Get going. This is Australia, the place they call God's own country. Certainly it's pretty enough. But does that mean my challenges this time are going to be nice and relaxed and easy? Well, I should be so lucky. Lucky, lucky, lucky. And here's Mia. She's going to be my fixer. She's got the first challenge ready. Can I grab? Thanks, darling. Oh, dear. Challenge one. Eat a roadkill sandwich at 14,000 feet. Australia is renowned for its bizarre wildlife. Unfortunately, plenty of it ends up dead on the side of the road. Wallabies crossing. Look, can you see it? Okay, let's turn around and get it. Smell it from here. Oh, I don't think I can eat that. They're already laying millions of eggs. Another one over there. In our enthusiasm to find fresh meat, we risk becoming roadkill ourselves. This one no longer has a head left, but there are no flies on it, so it must be pretty fresh. So this is a wallaby. There you go, Skip. <laughs> the bush tucker man. I'm the road tucker man. Oh, man. In this tropical heat, I tell you, the, the death smell sets in pretty early. But I wanted a medley of marsupials, so we kept on looking. Then we saw a rodent that would frighten any cat back home. But not, sadly, a truck. Rat in a bag. Actually, that's a big brother of the rat, called a bandicoot. The best eating here is on the back and the legs there. Might carve a bit of steak off that. You a leg man or a breast man? Not bad. There you go. If that was a bit of chicken on your plate, you wouldn't think twice about eating it. Very nice, very tender. It's been tenderised by a 12-ton truck. What are you trying to tell us, Skip? Oh, those guts stink, I'll tell you that. There we go, down the body. And the nasty bit, for any children watching, over the head. Disgusting. Okay, these are sizzling up pretty good. What would be really bad, of course, is if I managed to eat the sandwich and then the parachute doesn't work, because as last meals go, I don't think rat has ever been requested by a convict on death row. That's my sandwich taken care of. Let's go and jump out of a plane. Easy to arrange. Skydiving is a really popular pastime here in Queensland. Rock and roll, guys. <laughs> this is Tibby, who's my uh, tandem skydive partner. He's a very, very gung-ho Hungarian man. He's got a broken jaw. How did you break your jaw, Tibby? Oh, you don't want to know. I'll tell you later on. Skydiving. <laughs> Most of the people we've seen in the skydiving community so far keep going, woo, rock and roll. <laughs> Which makes me think they should really just play musical instruments. Rock and roll, I said rock and roll. He's into, I'm more into country and western, which doesn't sound quite so macho when you're jumping out of a plane. Country and western. By the time we arrived at Cairns Airport, I'd developed a nervous grin to mask the panic building up inside of me. Then it was onto the plane which worryingly had a hole in the fuselage instead of a door. Before long, it was too late to turn back, although I can assure you I would have tried if I hadn't been securely strapped into a tandem parachute with Tibor. As the field shrunk below us, the full horror of what we were about to attempt became apparent. Sandwich in hand, I watched the first victim plunge into the ether. That was scary enough, but I was up next. And 
with a count of three, I left a perfectly working aeroplane, armed only with a sudden faith in God and my hideous in-flight meal. That isn't the parachute, it's a guide which helps keep you stable in free fall. Within seconds we'd reached terminal velocity and it was time to tuck into my sandwich, which as you can see was also travelling pretty fast. The only plus point was I was too terrified to realise how bad it tasted. Only when the chute opened did I begin to notice a distinct flavour of rotting meat. But by that time I was less worried about botulism than breaking a leg when we landed. Oh. <laughs> Alright. Skydiving while eating is very, very ill-advised. <laughs> Most of it went up my nostril and in my face. <laughs> Smith one, Australia nil. Challenge two. Beat a champion chopper. Well, I was off to a great start against the old enemy, and my next stop was at a rural fair, the sort of thing country folk had to put up with because they can't afford televisions. There was a pageant charting 200 years of Australia's glorious history, from being thieving convicts who were lucky to escape the gallows, all the way up to the modern age. There are the swinging 60s. I bet they were fun round here. And there's a boy dressed as a computer. You obviously can't do a challenge like this in the big city, so I've come out to the countryside, a little country town called Atherton. We've got an agricultural fair going on, There's all sorts of fairground events, and I'm assured there are going to be some wood choppers here. They're going to be happy to take on a pom just to prove that England always get beaten by Australia. But that's what they think. In this final of the Tableland Hardware 275mm standing block handicap. After a quick stop off at the hot dog stall, I soon managed to locate the choppers, who were all beefy farmers with biceps the size of Popeyes. As the contest got underway, I could see they looked pretty good with an X. Well, apart from that buck tooth boy, obviously. Incredibly, they were soon dragging spectators away from the more traditional fairground attractions. Bizarre as it may seem, this is actually a recognised sport in Oz, and professionals can earn a tidy living by reducing bits of wood to matchsticks in the fastest possible time. Clearly, I'd need a lesson before I took them on. This is Brett. He's the secretary and handicapper in the Northern Division of Wood Chopping. Well, I, I think I'll need some tips first. You are a chunky man yourself. You're probably in a good position to give me some advice. So who do you think I should take on? Who's who should you who, take who, on? Who, frankly, is not in good form today? Who's not in good form? What if you take on this fella here? He's one of our what old... Oh, sorry, what's his name? Martin Canole. Martin? Come here, Martin. You're Can I say hello for, for British television? This I've come here to here take on an Australian wood chopper. Yeah. You sure you're up to challenging someone nearly double your age? Oh, he's 70. Yeah. Oh, surely I can beat you. Um, and and if you're, what, 30? 38. Oh, 38. Same age as me. 38. There you go. We're both fine figures of men. Well, I'll, I'll accept your challenge. Okay, I'll come along. All right, pal. Look yeah. forward to taking you on, Martin. Yeah, right. Thanks, Cub. So the challenge was set. Me versus Martin, the 70-year-old chopper. To make him feel better about being a pensioner with arthritis, I let him prove how steady his grip was by shaving me with his axe. There you go, there's my stubble. Can I carry it? I wasn't even sure I could lift the block. <laughs> yes, I can. No cheating now, Martin. Put that on properly. Oh, yeah. I know you're worried. Yeah. We've got a challenge here from Grub Smith from the UK. He's going to challenge one of our top axemen, Martin Canole from North Queensland, from Melander to a standing block chop on an account one, two, three, and now we'll start. Alright. Two, three. Right, the old codger didn't have a chance. I went at it like Jack Nicholson in The Shining, or that bloke who used to sort out Henry VIII's marital problems. Mind you, he was quick. Most 70-year-old blokes in Britain find opening a packet of Werther's Originals a bit of a strain, but he was cutting through that log like butter. Obviously, I was wearing the wrong shoes or something, because no matter how hard I tried, the coffin dodger pulled further and further ahead. And then it was over. Disaster for Smith. Can't beat a good old. <laughs> very, very tired. What a trouser I was going to give you. No, it's very exhausting work. Oh, I can't even say that again. It's a piece of piss, but. <laughs> How do you think I did? Have a look at my log. Where did I go wrong? 
Well, you were striking like lightning. <laughs> Just not in the same place twice. <laughs> So, I'd failed one challenge. Three more to go with the prospect of a gruesome forfeit to come. I couldn't afford any more cock-ups. Challenge three, eat a witchetty grub. I like the sound of this challenge. Essentially, it's grub eats grub. Something I was constantly trying to do as a 13-year-old boy to get my drift. Could never get the angle right. Here's my local Jabakai guide. It's called Buster. Watch your Buster. He's gonna be showing me around the forest and getting me some tempting insects to eat. Where do the witch de grubs actually hide? Uh, we're, we're looking up an old tree trunks. They live in the trees rather than under the ground, then. Yeah. Sounds messy. I dare say the Aborigines were glad when supermarkets came along. You got no holes going through into the trunk of it. This one's got holes. Yeah, you might find one in here. How do we get them out, though? Okay, let's give them a little dump across a vine or a root. Here we go. Oh my god, it's a maggot. Let's have a look. Oh, that's just so squidgy. Which is the head end and which is the arch? Yeah, this head end up here. Right, and that's where the uh, that's shiny part That's the bit you don't want to eat. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. We'll probably get about two or three out of this fella. Uh, awful. Do we eat them raw or uh, cook them? Or? They're going over the ash of the fire. They're going in the fire? Yeah. Right, okay, first we're going to make a fire then. I could have lent Buster my cigarette lighter, but I decided to let him do it his way. Oh, bit of smoke. And very efficient it was too. Any Boy Scouts watching, this is how to do it. There we go. Here we are with the fire. OK, that was impressive. How do we actually uh, cook the old grubs? Is it like barbecue on a stick or uh, yep. we'll it chuck on, it on, on a, a stick, hot eh? shovel? This is going to kill them pretty comprehensively, isn't it? Yeah, just oh, it. right up the arse, that is, isn't it? Essentially, yep. you're in... Oh, no, what's this come out of it? We've bursted him. Oh, no. We'll just chuck him on. How long do you cook a witchy grub for? Uh, just until you get a bit of coals around him. Now this fella look like you're ready to be eaten. OK, mate. Okay. I'll have the first half. Go ahead, mate. Rather unfairly, Buster took the best bit. I think you've just left me the arse, haven't you? No. This is where the Bush Tucker man, or your proper travel presenter, goes, Yes, this is very, very good. <laughs> you are a wise people. <laughs> Actually, it's horrible. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Then I helped put out the fire by demonstrating some of the British tribal habits you might see after closing time. <laughs> Challenge four, win a cane toad race. Cane toads were introduced to Australia about 60 years ago. They were brought over to eat this cane beetle which was destroying the crops. Unfortunately, they bred very, very fast because they don't have any natural predators in this part of the world. So they're now considered pretty much vermin. Uh, they're always getting uh, killed on the roads. They hang around in car parks, back gardens, things like that. They're pretty easy to find. We just uh, wander around in here. There's one. I brought my big hat here, this is how I'm going to catch it so I don't get poisoned. Ram it on top. Let's see if we can find a bigger one. There's plenty of them around. There's one! Fucking hell, look at the size of that one. That is about the size of a man's fist. Oh! There we go. Oh, he's not comfy. Which way up are you going, mate? There we go. Look at the size of that. that is, there's the big poison sacks I'm talking about. You can see them swelling up there. He's not happy. He doesn't want to go to the races, but unfortunately he's going to. But I'm not going to eat you, mate. I'm not French. So you're going to enjoy yourself. <laughs> right, here's my toe. See what sort of racer he is. What's going on here, mate? I'm ringing an entrance. <laughs> I'll tell you later. Well, just, geez, don't worry, mate. Wait, mate, that's on steroids, that it's thing. It's enormous. I'll tell you what, mate. I'm going to have to have to swab that thing, I can tell you now. I am eight of the most highly trained professional thoroughbred racing cane toads you are ever likely to lay your eyes on, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I just want to pull out a very average looking cane toad for you to have a bit of a look at. Cane toad racing's become a popular pastime in some states. 
People pack out racing clubs where MCs pick audience members to back and bet on champion toads. In racing in the blue tonight, I want you to hear, I want to hear it for Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy! Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy! Give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, straight out from the Olympics, he's racing in the blue. All right, folks, there's our six toads now. Of course, I brought my own. That's not a toad, mate. That's a stuffed toad. That's not a toad. That is a toad. That is a British toad, mate. Mate, you're joking, mate. You expect this mongrel to race against... Look at the size of it! Do we give him a start or what? Well, mate, what are you going to call the bloody thing? British bullfrog! This is obviously a big fat pommy toe, no doubt about it. Mate. I'll tell you what, we'll put in British bullfrog. There you go. Hey! Hey! Let's get underway. For good luck, I kissed my frog prince. <laughs> You're a sicko, son. Ladies and gentlemen, race one, both they were fine back, eight day races, and they're racing. At the sound of the horn, we were off. It was all rather confusing. It seemed like you had to encourage the entrance with cheap party whistles. I needed to make the winning bucket first, but in all the chaos, I had no idea how I was doing. Finally, I got to the bucket. This was turning into a nail biter. Australia had pulled the score back to two all. As we drove down the coast road, I realised I had to give it a hundred percent effort. I would say hundred and ten percent, like footballers do. That doesn't make any sense. Challenge five: catch a shark. To familiarise myself with my prey, I took a dip in the local aquarium shark tank. None of the predators on show would be likely to get a lead role in the remake of Jaws, but their reputation alone was enough to make me come close to soiling my nice rubber suit. Shark! Then it was off to sea, which I found bad enough. Always a mistake. Fish live in the sea, men live on the dry land. We only had four hours to catch a shark, so the pressure was really on. We were heading out to the Great Barrier Reef, home to millions of beautiful, brightly coloured fish, all of them on the menu for our great white chums. As I'd never been fishing before, I asked the crew for some hints about catching the big one. Steve the skipper. He's catching some live bait at the moment. When you go fishing for sharks, you have to go fishing first to catch something a shark might want to eat. Might have been more sensible to go to a fishmonger first, Steve. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to catch some bottom feeders. Certain places we could have gone. Right, that seems to have stopped. So I lifted up a couple of feet. One, two, let's see whether I'm any better than the skipper. Well, not that time, but I soon hooked up another fish head. <laughs> Even the experienced skipper looks as though he's having an epileptic fit when it happens. Yeah, there's a one-eyed one, look. Oh, good look, one-eyed now, yeah. Oh, Jesus, look at that. He ripped his eye out. So far, I've uh, used about three pilchards to catch nothing. I've actually lost more fish. I've got negative equity. Oh, I think we've got some action here. It's caught something. Oh-ho! Fifth's first fish. Look at it, sticking his tongue out. Someone's just been poisoned. I got one this big. <laughs> Typical fish story, but I can honestly say to you, if we don't catch a shark here today, it'll be the first time in 12 months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flushed with success, I decided to go for a bigger prize. Steve gave me the necessary bait. Pizza, right. This is called burley in Australia. That's just basically blood guts to attract predators. I'm going to give this a good old lob. Red. Two. Three. Here, Sharky, Sharky. Come on. Get it while it's fresh. Right, that should have got them sufficiently excited. Time to get my rod. Quite as easy as it looks. So we baited our hooks, threw out our lines. And waited. Uh, 
but not for long. Soon I had something on my line, and it was big. Fucking hell, this thing is putting up a hell of a fight. Strong possibility of being, being, being tugged out to sea. Whoa! Oh my god. I'm no expert, Steve, but I don't think I don't think that's a shark. Sorry, shark. It's a beautiful gold spot pod. Yeah, it might have weighs a bit, doesn't it? It's a oh! <laughs> not heavy. That's a big old fish. You may think cod are small enough to fit in a fish finger, but this one was so heavy I could barely lift it. Unfortunately, it wasn't a shark. Magnificent. Oh, keep the family going for the whole week. With time running out, I cast again, and this time it looked promising. Is that a shark? It's grey. It's got a fin on it. Hey! What have we got? Spanish mackerel with Mr. Shark. Spanish mackerel? That's not a fucking mackerel. What's this? Got a fin on the back. That's not a shark? Yeah. No, it's not a shark. It's a good eating fish, but we've unfortunately we've missed a shark. Bollocks. Coming out here on the briny. He's a special breed of man. And I'm not that breed. I'm really disappointed. I really wanted to beat the Australians, just for everyone back home. They're always putting one over on us, and they've done it again. Uh, I've ended up with uh, cod guts all over my shirt, and now I've got to pay a nasty forfeit, so I'm going to pay the price. But I'm really sorry. I really am. It's a national disgrace. I should be taken out and shot. Your forfeit. Prod a crocodile. The crocodiles around here are the largest in the world, and also the most vicious. They're actually faster than a racehorse over 20 yards. I failed three challenges, so I've got to pay my forfeit. I'm happy about it. I'm going to prod this fella. Very large crocodile. 